Let's return now to focus in Canberra and this migration amendment bill that the government facing a delay. Joining me is Liberal MP Keith Wallahan. So opposition playing hardball on this, sending it off to a Senate inquiry. No passage of it before Easter. I, I think the key thing to note here is the deficiencies in process. And process matters. Uh, how we scrutinise proposals, how we hear from people who are experts in an area really matters. And in order to circumvent that, you really need to make the case that there are very good reasons to do so. And from what we've heard last night and this morning, those reasons haven't been established. So we're asking for more time to have more scrutiny. And I think that is always a good thing to do in a democracy. And Dan Tehan and James Patterson have both been warning that this could have the reverse effect and, in fact, prompt more use of people smugglers by people in countries like Iran or Iraq that might be targeted as, as part of this bill. How does that work? What's the concern around that? Uh, I'll, I'll be very frank. I'm not sure how that actually happens, but th they have made that point. I'd be interested. Again, this is, this is the problem we have. Uh, I'm sitting here speaking to you, n not having been across the detail. And so uh, it, it would be, uh, I think, unfair and unwise of me just to speculate on things. I, I don't like doing that. Mm. Uh, I think we need to be forensic about this. And if they, if they have said that there are potential uh, factors like that, I'd like to analyse it. And I think we need to hear from experts on it. If uh, the government says it's urgent, are you saying that if it's so urgent, they've got to bring the parliament back uh, through this post-Easter break? Is that basically the argument? Well, well, there's two levels of urgency. The government is claiming that the urgency requires it passed today. Mm. And, and that, that's one level. Well, we're saying, well, let's buy a little bit more time, have this inquiry, and if, if from that we find out that, yes, you do, this is urgent, mm. uh, and we don't think that case has been made, we are prepared to come back. On another matter, we've seen the blood bank make a, an appeal for donations. I, I know you gave a speech last night in the chamber on this issue. It was a very personal speech too, uh, uh, relating to the the, uh, the death of a young a young girl. And you you had her father in the chamber last night for this speech. Can you tell our viewers about this and exactly what's being requested now in terms of blood donations? No, thank you for that. Um, that, that was really hard. Uh, uh, he's a good friend of mine. We served together in Afghanistan. And his daughter, Arya Zimmerman, uh, died aged five. And, um, and he was there with his son, her brother. And he made the point to me, which I didn't appreciate, was that giving blood doesn't just save lives. It buys time. And Arya was only on this earth for five years, but she spent 500 days in hospital. But it would have been a lot less if but for the generosity of Australians who gave blood and plasma, that, that allowed her to have one more Christmas, allowed her to have her last moments with her family over many months, and that's so precious. So I know there's an appeal uh, over Easter for people to give blood and plasma. Uh, please do it. Uh, one in three Australians will require blood, but only one in 30 donate. So let's lift those numbers. Yeah, 1,000 a day they're looking for at the moment. That's right. And I, I do know that they're opening up more facilities on Good Friday as well. So right throughout the weekend, people can donate. Keith Wallahan, thanks so much. Thank you, Kerry. I appreciate it.